Welcome to Talking Tactics. Winter is here, the first snow has fallen, and temperatures are dropping rapidly all over Ukraine. With winter comes the usual chaos, traffic accidents, heavy winds knocking down power lines. But again, this year, winter brings one more nuisance. For Russia, the coming of winter marked the opportunity to start their expected attacks on critical infrastructure like heating plants and power stations. On Friday, the 24th of November, they launched a swarm of Iranian Shahid suicide drones. While cities like Odessa and Kherson and almost any city close to the front line endure this on a daily basis, the attack on the capital was the largest in months. The Ukrainian Air Force said that the Iranian-designed Shahid drones used by Russia were launched from two directions, Primorsk, Akhtarsk and Kursk. As a result, nearly 200 buildings in Kyiv, including 77 residential ones, were without power for a couple of hours and an 11-year-old girl was injured. And while that is horrible, some say that this was only a reconnaissance attack for Russian forces to test the air defense network and maybe even pinpoint the location of some systems. Also, it could be much worse. Ukraine's air defense bolstered an over 90% success rate thanks not only to modern systems provided by the West, but also clever repurposing of old Soviet weapons. And that, even though Russia has upgraded their Shahid drones. From the debris, for example, we can see that they have been painting them black. The spokesperson of the Air Force of Ukraine, Yuri Ignat, stated, we can now see they've used carbon fiber. Carbon is an absorbing material for radar signals, and as for the black color, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand. And he's right, if you think about it, it seems so obvious that you wonder how they didn't come up with that idea earlier. Anyway, just in time for the winter terror, President Volodymyr Zelensky and his defense minister have announced the formation of a 20-nation air defense coalition. ППО. Лідерами а, в її організації є Німеччина та Франція. Я дякую за такий лідерство. News coincides with the German announcement to send an additional Patriot battery and Iris T defense systems to Ukraine. Good news, because without Western help, Ukraine would literally be sitting in the dark right now. For example, the news agency Reuters published a video of the night attack. The explosions we see on the video look a lot like advanced hit efficiency and destruction ammunition, also called a head. This ammunition is programmed to release a cloud of sub-projectiles just ahead of a target. It's kind of like the dodge version of cluster munition that makes it effective because it doesn't actually have to hit, for example, a drone, but get just close enough. So, with a high degree of probability, what we see here is the work of ultra-modern Skynex or Sky Ranger air defense systems, which use such ammunition. Several such systems were transferred to Ukraine during the past year, and they represent an important step to improving Ukraine's air defense. Skynix and Sky Ranger are both very similar. Both are produced and sold by the German defense giant Rheinmetall, although the original design is Swiss. Skynex is a large and complex air defense system that comes in different dimensions, but Ukraine received two mounted on a new Rheinmetall 8x8 military truck. They use a 35mm Erlikon MK3 revolver cannon. The Sky Ranger 30, the newer version of the Sky Ranger 35, is built on the chassis of a boxer armored vehicle. In addition to the 30mm revolver cannon, it can fire two short-range surface-to-air missiles. The gun has a range of around 3,000 meters, the missiles between 5 to 8 kilometers. The basic idea is not that new, it's just a gun on some wheels. But super advanced and highly mobile. In some ways similar to the German Gepard, we just did a report from the field of that gun in action, you can check it out. Western systems like these are fundamental to protecting the Ukrainian population, and we would like to go into a little bit more technical detail. The Patriot, or phased array tracking radar to intercept on target, is basically the Rolls-Royce of air defense. The Patriot can track an object at up to 100 kilometers and up to altitudes of over 24, depending on the missile used. So you can imagine a kind of bell around the position, the area of potential engagement. But the system is smart and will typically wait to engage a target until it has the highest probability of kill. That's typically somewhere between 5 and 25 kilometers. The Patriot is a lot more than just a truck with some missiles on it. The system includes a high-tech radar that combines surveillance, tracking and engagement of potential targets. A so-called engagement control station or ECS, it's the command center. While the system does a lot automatically, the final launch decision requires a human command. The support system, which consists of two 150 kilowatt generators. And finally, a launching station that can be operated both manually and remotely. There are different variants of the Patriot and different variants of ammunition it can fire. According to Ukraine's Air Force spokesperson Yuri Ignat, Ukraine received the Pac-3 missiles. These are the newest, most efficient and compact family of missiles. The downside, a single Pac-3 missile costs over $4 million to produce. NASAMS. The NASAMS 
short for National Advanced Surface to Air Missile Systems, also consists of a command post, sensors, radar system, and munitions that can be fired from a standalone pod or from the back of a truck. Its radar can detect threats of up to around 125 kilometers, depending on factors like the weather and size of a target. The NASAMS utilizes the same kind of missiles already in common use with Western fighter jets, like the AMRAAM, which costs only up to 300,000 US dollars a piece. That makes it still a lot cheaper to use than the Patriot, and also the munition is more widely available. The German Iris T SLM, which stands for Infrared Imaging System Tail Vector Controlled Surface Launch Medium Range System, is similar to the NASAMS, designed and developed by the German company Deal. Just like the NASAMS, it is configured to use missiles initially designed for fighter jets, the Iris T. This heat seeking missile has a medium range of around 32 kilometers and has successfully downed Russian cruise missiles. The system includes a multifunction radar with a range of around 250 kilometers, the Hawk. The Hawk is the predecessor to the Patriot. Some active versions are up to 50 years old. It's no longer used in the USA, but many of the country's allies still operate the Hawk, including Spain, which has just announced to send another six systems to Ukraine. The Hawk has been upgraded and changed many times over the years. The first version had a range of up to 25 kilometers and an altitude of up to 14. After being modernized, the maximum target interception range was increased to 40 kilometers and the maximum interception altitude became 18. As you can see, from the sky next to the Patriot, all these systems are different. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages, like cost effectiveness, for example. If you're asking yourself which one is the best and which one would benefit Ukraine the most, well, that's kind of the wrong approach. First of all, Ukraine is a big country. President Zelensky once said one would need 50 Patriot batteries to protect the entire surface. But that probably won't be enough, because what will protect the air defense systems? That brings me to the next point. The best air defense you can have is not system A or system B, but an integrated network of systems. The word network, meaning not only different air defense systems that are spread out over a certain area, but ones that are layered, so protecting each other. And in best case, they're all connected by a central command. In conclusion, a combination of systems like the Sky Ranger, which are super effective for taking out drones, and systems like the Patriot, which can protect an entire city from large cruise missiles like the Kinjal, is what it takes to make sure that the lights in Ukraine stay on and the country doesn't freeze in darkness. Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe, and see you next week.